The interesting thing is, Mariana Machia, come forward, please. And turn the organ on with your key. <laughs> there they are. They, uh, well, I think I can say that you depart from the club culture in Berlin. You're artists, you're moving around a lot in all kinds of music, mu musical realms. Um, and uh, in my perception, it is the case that you, <laughs> is that you um, discovered that, of course, you can work with synthesizers and loudspeakers and make this wonderful music that you can just, well, move around and feel safe and or dance to or whatever. And then the, uh, the organ came around and you, dis you discovered the MIDI connection and the, co the ab ability to control organs by just connecting your laptop like you're doing right now. And that, um, in fact, audiences really love that. So, you know, people that really dig these really low frequencies and not just the fake ones from loudspeakers or the, the, well, the, the relaxed way of having a big sound. So would you please already re respond to that? You have the microphone, Matthew. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Hello. Um, uh, wonderful to be here. I think uh, for us the organ kind of shaped us totally as artists because we were uh, we were coming from two different backgrounds. Uh, I was um, studying jazz guitar and composition. Maren was uh, studying uh, architecture but working with electronic music a lot. And we were trying to find ways to uh, work together and, and this was at a point like beginning of the um, of the, the millennium where there was still this discussion about like electronic music and acoustic music which was, was the last steps I think of this like how can laptops and um, instruments work together that is now like really over these discussions but it, at the time it was still a, still a thing and um, so we were working with guitar and electronic and I was trying to manipulate the guitar to make it more sound electronic. Marin was working with the live sampling like it was at the time. And then we discovered at the organ um, that actually you can bring these two worlds together, the electronic brain if you want and the analog soul. Um, we got a, com a commission for a, um, a composition for our organ at St. Peter in Cologne and um, there we find out that, that you can plug in your computer into the organ and um, make all these wonderful sounds. Um, and since then, we really got hooked up and said, like, this is the thing that we want to do. We started to make our own music machines um, that are not organs, but are um, like accordions and uh, drum machines and stuff like this. And um, we're very happy to be back at the organ since some years now and uh, to explore it in the Aggregate project. So, so Marion, could you please say something about the audiences and the audience reactions and what kind of audiences did you attract with, uh, with your music? Um, it's really diverse. I mean, in 2018, we started in Berlin our Aggregate, aggregate project uh, for automated pipe organs in the Auenkirche in Berlin. And um, we uh, brought uh, especially electronic musicians to the instrument to work with the organ because they are all used to uh, handle software and working with MIDI notes. And uh, we found out that there are, there's a big attraction also to uh, electronic musicians to work with a real pipe organ. And um, even at the first edition we did, um, the church was filled with people and with a very diverse community that what was also brought in uh, by the musicians that um, we asked for uh, making new compositions for the instrument. And since last year, we present a festival once a year at uh, three uh, very nice churches in Berlin, the Kaiser Wilhelm Gedächtniskirche, the uh, Kapelle der Versöhnung and at Auenkirche. And um, yeah, I mean last year we were really very happy that we could fill all these places and um, also that it was um, yeah, a very diverse community. So, so you did fill these places because the Wilhelm yes. Gedächtniskirche is a huge church, so how did you do that? Yeah, I mean, um, there were, I think it was the, the, the place itself is uh, very special and that combined with the program and um, I think also the curation that we invited um, 
these musicians that were also known, they had, they all brought their communities and um, I mean, we also did a lot of press work and uh, we discovered that there was a lot of interest also from uh, a lot of magazines and newspapers or radio uh, stations. They really wanted to know about uh, how it works. And I mean, the possibilities are there since a very long time, but we recognize that um, most people don't know about it and it's so hard for, for them to imagine that you can plug in a laptop and play the real pipes. Uh, there were people in the audience and afterwards I was kind of shocked that they, some of them thought that um, amplification system is involved. And I really, it was hard to, for me to explain the simple fact that no, it's the real pipes that sound yeah. and it's only the pipes that we are listening to. And uh, this is, yeah, this is really interesting that for so many people that are not organ players, they, it's so hard for them to realize. Uh, the other way around, we get sometimes we get these compliments from the audience when they have attended a concert on this console that we have such wonderful speakers, yeah. <laughs> which we have. But you know, of course, it's the organs that sound. I think also there is a kind of a, um, a kind of a digital fatigue. You know, there is so much of. I mean, the, the digital. Um, Technology has made such improvements in the last years and uh, we are all surrounded by it and we have them very close and somehow also for the electronic music scene it's very interesting to get beyond it and to get m f more physical again. I mean loudspeakers can be really physical uh, um, but it's a very different... Um, I mean, we have invited people who are like residents at like famous clubs like Berghain and then they would apply their music to the organ. So you would like uh, work a lot with bass as you would expect and uh, a bass from a long pipe is something completely different than you get from a subwoofer. So um, this is like um, very attractive to, um, to these scenes, I think, uh, to experience also their music in a new light filtered through the organ because you can really hear the aesthetics of the people who are approaching the organ who are not organists at all who don't play the piano who maybe did not study whatever and they apply their aesthetics to the organ and this uh, transports to the audience I think quite well which makes me very curious could you just show a little piece of music <laughs> okay uh, if I had this my phone yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, last year we spent some days here at Orgel Park and uh, prepared a concert that we did in November, November. I think. And um, then we figured out a, a really nice thing just uh, with uh, register changes that we can do from the computers. So we don't have to touch uh, the keys or the registers at all, but we can uh, program them. And we can do the register changes Maybe some people could watch it now when the piece is uh, running here on this little screen. We can do them so fast that only the register changes make the, the music and uh, it's, uh, it works with um, not the full power of the wind pressure but with uh, less and this creates a very interesting tuning system that uh, kind of uh, reminded us more like of a, of a gamelan uh, orchestra and we really fell in love with this uh, sound and uh, it's a it's kind of a fragment that we listen to it's five to six minutes and yes
of this term, humani humanizing machines on screen, from the conversation that we had in November and in January when you were here, because then you told me that synthesizers do have this knob, humanize. So you know, you can make music on the synthesizer that's I think something from the 80s and the 90s, and it just sounded so machine-like. And you hit that knob, humanize, and it's what at once it adds all kinds of little, yeah, little flaws, I would almost say. And at once it starts to sound really lively. Say something about that in relation to this piece. I'm really curious because I sensed lots of, you know, not at all machine-like aspects in this music. I, I start and then... I mean, it's, it's all created by the pipes and that makes it so lively and it's especially this reduced pressure of wind that creates sounds that we, we were totally uh, fascinated by that, that a, a pipe like this can sound like this and I think there's such a big world of, of uh, possibilities to create sounds with all these thousands of pipes of all these organs and I, I mean every time that we work with an instrument we just we, we discover something new that we didn't know before and we think like we have plans in our head uh, what pieces we create but then we always discover th something new and especially with this um, with instruments like this and we think like oh no we have to think about a new piece that is especially for for this organ and um that that's interesting you know so you actually are falling, falling in love with specific sounds that only this or that instrument can make, and then you make compositions for that. In fact, that's the old habit in the 17th, 16th, 18th century, to just write a music for that specific instrument. Mm. That makes your life harder, I think, because then you cannot really transport your pieces. <laughs> that's true. I mean, we've been, we've been last week in Barcelona to prepare a piece there for the Palais Gulao, and it's a very different organ, it's a very different um, possibilities that you can do, so you really need to adjust, and I mean, especially with this type of organs that you have here, this wonderful instrument, where you can have, like, as many manuals as you want, if you want, think about it like this. So this, this, so this piece is like, the idea of this piece is that you have 10 layers or 10 manuals, and each manual has its own dedicated, like, crescendo pedal if you want that uh, changes the registers uh, puts them on and off and then you get all this um, not so in sync um, phenomena and uh, all, all this in between things that happen and I think this is uh, yeah that's what you say like about the dehumanizing is like leaving the grid and also we work a lot with a fluent time and usually a uh, uh, software would be like really a, a hard, uh, hard uh, coded time but we, we leave this um, and make it slower and faster or uh, program lots of notes that are um, then uh, played on the organ to imitate for example like um, um, fade ins and fade outs and this is uh, there are so many notes involved or clouds of notes that you cannot play them by hand but you also it's also very hard to put them by hand in the software so you need to program all these clouds of notes and stuff like this and um, this is yeah this is only possible with this kind of, uh, of organs and also like how, how short can a note be or how many notes can an organ accept without uh, hanging I mean this, this happens because the, the instruments we have we have made a list of organs around the world that have uh, capabilities of being controlled by the computer since we want to play more and um, every of these organs they are not always in the best shape yeah? so you have to really uh, adapt to the uh, to the shape that the organ has sometimes I mean you know, as Marin mentions we were playing uh, several times at the Auenkirche that was an organ um, at the end of its um, of this period of time. Uh, of it, it needs uh, a restoration. It needs a restoration, yes. And it gets the restoration right now. So all the pieces that we prepared for this organ before um, will be, need to be readjusted because there was this really nice detuned um, things. And, and you so. like that, of course. Yes. <laughs> Final question, and I'll go into the break. I, you just mentioned your aggregate festival, or aggregate, what should I say? Aggregate? I mean, in, in Germany, Germany we say aggregate, yeah, but all the others that. around they say aggregate. Will there be uh, another one, another edition this year? Yes, in uh, October we will present a three-day festival again at Gedächtniskirche and Kapelle der Versöhnung, not at Auenkirche because it's 
uh, now not uh, in use. And uh, it's mid of October for three days. It's an installation over the course of the whole festival at Kapelle der Versöhnung. And we invited, besides us, uh, five composers uh, to present new pieces at Gedächtnis. So if you so want to experience yes. what it's like to have a full Kaiser Wilhelm Gedächtniskirche just for organ music, you should be there. Thank you very much.